All right, this week is going to be the final week for the pre-trib rapture scriptures in Pauline epistles. We're going to be doing this week, we're going to be doing the books of Titus and Philemon. So, uh, real quick here before I get started, I just want to make a point. Uh, if you have noticed, or if you haven't noticed, I've been wearing the same shirt. Different shirt underneath, but the same you know, t-shirt underneath, but the same flannel shirt. And a little uh, way of saying it's a black and white issue. So, my own little joke there. But um, we're going to start out here in the book of Titus. And, uh, no, oh, where's my Bible at? Oh, so you have my Bible. I have a special guest here, if you can't already figure out who it is. She's going to be joining me in the study. <laughs> Turn to the book of Titus. A, um, we're going to be talking about this later on in the study. She's going to be sharing some of her personal uh, experiences from the past. Another little aspect of her testimony was the fact that she was actually a post-tribber before the Holy Spirit showed her the truth. Uh, not uh, convincing or convinced by me or something else. So it was the Lord that showed it to her. So, Amen. And it lines up with other things that happened in her past before she even knew me. So we'll be talking about that. But let's start out here in Titus, the book of Titus chapter 1 and verse 4. Go ahead and read it. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Hmm. There's that word peace again. Isn't that awful for those post-tribbers out there? Peace that comes from God. And yet Revelation 6, 4 says that Jesus takes peace from the earth when he opens that one seal. The red horse rider goes out and takes peace from the earth. Doesn't work too good for you if you're uh, believing that the Christians, the body of Christ goes through the time of Jacob's trouble. Doesn't work. And the time of Jacob's trouble too, by the way, as I've said, because I realize there are people that just click on these and it's they're brand new. They haven't seen it from the beginning. You know, starting in the book of Romans, go back and watch that one, work your way up through the Pauline epistles. But the time is not called the tribulation or the great tribulation. Those are never given as titles in your King James Bible. I don't know about the new ones that come from the, the Vatican, the ESV, the NIV, NASV, that stuff. I can't speak for those. But the King James Bible gives two titles for this time period. The time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, and Daniel, Daniel's 70th week there in the book of Daniel. Okay, so I uh, had to kind of give that at the beginning of each one. But you always see this thing of peace promised to Christians. How does that work if you go into Revelation 6, verse 4? At the very beginning of the time of Jacob's trouble. Not old, halfway through when the wrath comes and stuff like this. No, it's at the beginning. Right after the Antichrist is unleashed, there's world war. He goes forth conquering and to conquer. What is that? That's war. Peace is taken from the earth. But we're promised peace from God the Father. Problem for you if you're post-trib. Go to Titus chapter 2, verse 11. 11 and 12. Read that. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Oh, hmm. better get a hold of that one. Okay, thank you for emphasizing the word that I would have done there. Good she time. read my thoughts, you know, that's how she does this. But you see there, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all Men, how does that work in the time of uh, Jacob's trouble? Hmm? Does his grace appear to those who take the mark? No. Nope. Sorry. And you say, well, that's because, you know, but they had the chance there first and stuff and all this other thing. Uh, yeah, but you see, if you compare it to the Pauline epistles, Paul says at one point, you know, how that he obtained mercy and he was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But he, because he, but he obtained mercy because he did it ignorantly in unbelief. But that doesn't appear in the time of Jacob's trouble. Those people, if they're blaspheming God, if, they are, if they're persecutors and injurious, it's because they've taken the mark of the beast. And that grace that brings salvation to all men, it's not there in the time of Jacob's trouble. All right? You better keep that in mind. But this is a key scripture here, these two verses. And it really, Lord really showed it to me when I was doing this study. These two verses are key verses for the thing of repentance being required, a changed life being required after salvation. Godly sorrow Look, worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of. That's right. Yeah. Check this out. 
the grace, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us. Wait a second. That grace that comes from God that leads to salvation, it's supposed to teach us something. There's supposed to be visible signs, in other words. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. That's what saved people do. That's what you have somebody that gets saved and they say, boy, before I was a blasphemer or a persecutor and injurious and, and I was, I mean, I was a drunkard and I was a porn addict and I was a, I was a prostitute and I was a this and I was a that. But thanks be to God, I'm not anymore. I've gotten the victory over that sin. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. My old sins are washed away. My old life is gone. You see, it teaches you. Our testimonies that we share as Christians where we say, let me tell you about what I did in my past. Oh boy, it teaches us. You see, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. A changed life that comes after salvation. A new creature in Christ. That, exactly. So, don't fall for these, you know, easy believism heretic lies. So, but uh, let's see here. Uh, verse 13 through 15. They're in Titus chapter 2. Let's look at that. Titus chapter 2, verses 13 through 15 looking for that blessed hope. Get that? Blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Well, I, I appreciate you trying, honey, but... you. She's kind of dumb a little bit sometimes, you know. She didn't read it right, okay? See, up there in verse 13, it's supposed to say the glorious appearing of the Antichrist and the false prophet. You know. <laughs> of course, I'm being a little sarcastic here. You know, we're looking for, a. It, we have the blessed hope that we're looking for Jesus. We're not looking for the New World Order. We're not looking for the Antichrist and the One World System and all this other stuff. Those things are there. We can see them coming, but it gives us hope that our blessed hope is going to be soon realized that we're going to go to be with Jesus. All through the Bolan epistles. I mean, how can you not see this stuff? Unless you are, you know, a Jesuit coadjutor and you're purposefully misleading people, which <laughs> there's plenty of those out there. I won't mention any names. Andrew Snake, Hoven, uh, uh, anyhow. I said I wasn't going to mention names, did I? But, you know, look at this. Verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. How does that work if you go into the time of Jacob's trouble, huh? I mean, if the Pauline epistles are for anybody in any dispensation, Genesis to Revelation, according to Mike Hoggard and a bunch of others, Genesis to Revelation, how does that work? Can somebody that goes into that time of Jacob's trouble, can they be purified there or redeemed from all all iniquity? Read Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. You can't be purified from taking that mark, worshiping the beast and his image. You can't be purified. And you get all these big Christian leaders like John MacArthur and, and Ken Hovind and some of these other guys, and they're coming out and saying, you know, I don't really think the Bible says that you can't take the mark. You see, these wolves in sheep's clothing are preparing people in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to take them right back here to the Pauline epistles and teach it as doctrine for them in that time when taking the mark will damn you to hell without any exception. That's what's going on. Again, that is how we know as Christians we cannot go into that time period. Because if we did, any Christian that would take the mark could make God into a liar. And God would cease to be God. God cannot lie. Let me show you that real quickly here. Uh, let's see, where's the verse at? Um, Which one? Verse 2. Chapter 1, verse 2. Read that. In hope of eternal life, life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Well, he could if Christians go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Because Ephesians 1.13 says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. But Revelation 14, verses 9 through 11 says about if any man takes the mark, he gets God's wrath. How does that work? So you say, some guy goes, I'm non-dispensational. Dispensationalism is of the devil. Okay, uh, then how do you make those two things match up? 
doesn't work. So let's continue here. Titus 3, verses 1 and 2. Go ahead and read that. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Are you sure you're reading that right? Maybe we ought to get an NIV off the shelf or something. It might, it might give a clearer reading or something. Or maybe we'll go back to the Nestles or something like that. Um, how can you be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates, to be, ever, to be ready to every good work? Um, is the Antichrist going to be in power in the time of Jacob's trouble? Subject to the Antichrist? Uh, hello? How does that work? Everything from Genesis to Revelation, it's all good for us. It's all doctrine for a Christian. You're out of your mind. If you really believe that and sincerely believe it, but these guys that are saying that, they don't really believe it. You can prove that very simply by the fact that they're saying, you know, it's all for us, it's all for us, and everything else, you know, and we're going to go through this time, this great tribulation time. And yet they're on YouTube, they're not stocking up, they're not getting ready to endure this time period, and, and then they'll come out and they'll say, it's really not going to be that bad in the Great Tribulation. They don't believe it for one minute. For one minute. They're atheists. They are Luciferians. Uh, there are a lot of people that, that profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. I'll show you that one real quick too. Right over here. Um, verse 16. Titus 1 verse 16. Go ahead. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Yep. Again, we were talking about this this morning. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't say that they don't do good works. It's unto every good work reprobate. Their good works, so to speak, are self-serving. That's the whole thing. That's what these people do. We're going to be talking about some of those people a little bit later. But, uh, you know, huh? you, you just, you're just just innocent. You don't know. Yes, do I am completely just, innocent. You know. So. I am uneducated. Yeah, yeah. You're not a confident feminist woman either. That's so. right. Had a, somebody post a comment, some woman post a comment on uh, our actual ministry website that uh, I don't, I don't, uh, what was the thing? I'm not. You're scared I'm scared, off. scared off by confident women. Yes. That's a good one. You know, I, I I haven't gotten that one yet, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. That it's was a new a, medal or trophy. Yeah, though. that was a new one. I like that one. I was going to frame it, but <laughs> but let's continue. Here. It's, it's crazy. Uh, go back oh. to Titus 3, verses 1 and 2. The things witches will come up with. Uh -huh. But again, uh, brethren, how can we be subject to principalities and powers? If we go into the time of Jacob's trouble, if this is written to people in the time of Jacob's trouble, Paul is literally telling them, be subject to the Antichrist. The Antichrist calls us all to receive a mark. So you have to take the mark, apparently. You see how non-dispensational people that are false, that are going to go into that time of Jacob's trouble because they're false, they're not saved, they're not leaving with us as Christians, they're going to go into that time, they're going to use these passages to damn people to hell. Non-dispensational teaching is satanic. I'll say it again. Non-dispensational teaching is satanic. I'll say it one more time. Non-dispensational teaching is satanic. There. Mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Let's continue. Titus chapter 3, verses 9 through 11. Very good verses. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. Good advice for you when you run into these post-trib heretics. Uh, there are some that are genuinely confused and they're saying, well, how would you answer this or, or that or whatever? There are other ones that are just completely arrogant. They are subverted. You know, they are not believing the right doctrines. They are non-dispensational. They're, they're just rabid. They're crazy, you know. And they'll ask you foolish questions. Can you give me one verse that says pre-trib 
rapture because if you can't then that proves that there is no pre-trib rapture <laughs> huh since when are we supposed to base all our doctrines on one verse you know secondly they have created this term pre-trib rapture and then they say we create a false term and then if you can't find our false created term then that proves that your system is wrong you know it's craziness craziness but what is it foolish questions what are you supposed to do avoid it that's what you're supposed to do I confront it. I'm a preacher. That's what I'm supposed to do. Hey, sure. But you get these people that are just rabidly post-trib, these heretics, avoid them. Admonish them first. Excuse me, I'll say that. Admonish them once, twice, and then they're a heretic. Okay, you're, you, you believe in a post-trib? Well, good for you. You're going through it. You know, it's bad. But that's what we have there for the book of Titus. Now we're going to go to Philemon. And only, we're only going to cover the first chapter today, okay? So we'll have to do another chapter some other time. Just joking. Philemon. It's only one chapter. Verse 3. See, she makes me wacky when I'm around her, so sorry about that. I am innocent. I can't believe yeah, you right. accused me of such an atrocity. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Verse 3, go ahead. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You're supposed to skip the word peace. It's not supposed to be in there. What, a piece We're of supposed jigsaw to, puzzle or something? It's grace unto or grace to you and tribulation from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's that's what the original Greek probably said. It's it's in there. I know it's in there. I I just I'd, I'd have to check my nestles, you know. Uh, no, it's grace and peace. Again, Revelation 6 4. Brethren, compare scripture with scripture. If we're given peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, we can't be here for a time when Jesus takes peace from the earth. And don't tell me that somehow you're going to be in some little insulated bubble as a Christian if you go into the time of Jacob's trouble and the whole world is at war and there's no peace and it's all just murdering death and everything else. And you get Christians in these little magic bubbles that float around and they're just going, la, 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 la. They just kind of boink, bounce into each other and stuff, you know. Peace, boink. Peace, you know. <laughs> it's so absurd when you think about it. All you can do is just make fun of it. Good night. Philemon 1, verse 9. Yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Okay. That's interesting. Notice that Paul says he is a prisoner of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Right now, a Christian can go to jail and say, it was the Lord's will for me to be here. Paul didn't go to jail because he was cheating on his taxes or because he was, you know, structuring. Or because we'll he didn't go names. to church. You know, yeah, Paul didn't, Paul didn't, I'm saying though, political types of things. You know, Paul, although that can be political too, you know, Paul didn't go to jail because he was robbing banks or because he was doing bad things. He went, you know, over the speed limit in his chariot or something. No, Paul went to jail because he was preaching the gospel. If you go to jail for preaching the gospel, and, you know, persecution could come before the rapture. I'm, I've never taught that there's no persecution. We just sit on a satin pillow until the rapture happens, and then we just float up, and there we go. No, 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 no. Persecution could come. It is coming to America. Um, and that's why I advise that we fight against Roman Catholicism and expose it because they're the culprits. They're the ones that are behind it. Expose the Vatican and the whole Jesuit system. And that's, don't go that's bragging important. your congressmen because yeah. they're all Jesuit coadjutors. Yeah. And if you think that you're, if you profess to be a real King James Bible believing Christian, but you are going to vote one of these Jesuits in for office, you better check yourself because no real King James Bible believing Christian woman out there is going to say, I'm for Catholic politicians, but I'm a King James Bible believing Christian. Mm -hmm. You better check yourself because Christians have never been for Catholicism or Jesuitry or the Vatican. You better check yourself if you're willingly going along with this, vote this guy in political regime. Mm -hmm. And we get a lot of it, you know, and stuff. And, and you're going to see why she's worked up here in just a couple of minutes because we're going to be showing some Things that haven't been revealed before. But, would this be true of somebody that goes into the time of Jacob's trouble? Could you say, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ? 
at that point in time. You know, verse 9, read it again. Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such an one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Well, technically, I guess you could say it if you're in that time. But the point is there, you know, you're going there because you've not taken the mark of the beast. And it's more of a political type of a thing there. And of course, you know, they have the faith of Jesus. I understand that. But again, comparing what we go through and what they're going to be going through in that time period, you know, how does this work out? When you have there in uh, Titus chapter 3, the Lord is supposed to be subject to principalities and powers. See, it's, it's, just, it's really, really weird, this whole system. Now look at uh, verse 23. There salute the Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Again, fellow prisoner in Christ. Christ Jesus. He's recognizing that it's the Lord's will for them to be there. You know? So, <clears throat> and uh, you say, well then, okay, but I'm still not making the connection between this and the rapture issue. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. Um, the people that are in that time, are they going to be in Christ Jesus? No. Can't be. Why? Because Christ's body, how, how can God pour out judgment and wrath upon His own body? doesn't make any sense. The body of Christ leaves before this time. Nobody's going to be in Christ Jesus. I mean, think about this. All through the Pauline epistles, we're taught that when you are in Christ, then you're going to be chastened, but you're not going to be kicked out of the body of Christ. You know, uh, these people that believe that there's no eternal security, that you have to endure to the end, and they'll, they'll use all these other, they'll rip verses out of other places that are not for us today. In fact, they'll Go to Hebrews mostly, which is ironic because it's actually four people that go into the time of Jacob's trouble. And they'll take stuff out of there to prove that you can be in Christ and then out of Christ and then get back into Christ and then come out of Christ again and then in and out. And so it's like Jesus says, okay, you know, you're part of my body, so you're like this finger here. Oh, you sin, and he cuts the finger off. Oh, no, they're back. He sticks it back on. Oh, they sinned again. He cuts it off again. Doesn't work. Doesn't work very good. So you see there again, Another scripture that proves we are in Christ Jesus right now. They're not in Christ Jesus in the future, in that time period. And when you become a prisoner in that time period, it's a different system than what we have now. All right. So, uh, and you know, I would say probably the people that go to prison in the future too, they're probably going to be pretty much forced to take the mark of the beast. So, uh, I think the ex, you know, the the public executions, the beheadings, and stuff like that are going to be. Um, it's pretty, pretty much going to be an instantaneous thing. You know, you, you're going to be given a chance to recant, you know. They'll probably be torturing people again, which, you know, who was the one that did that? The Vatican, the Catholic Church. And uh, that's why they're coming to power again. They're coming to open power. So um, that's going to be it for the Preacher of Rapture Scriptures. You know, there's not a whole lot in the book of Philemon. But um, you can go ahead and get your notes there uh, for the other little part of this video. But um, you know, I just want to say something here. I, I added these up. Um, from Romans to Philemon, I just went through and I counted how many verses we've covered in these preacher rapture studies that are in my notes. Okay, the, the Lord gave me other scriptures as we've been doing this, and I've been quoting other scriptures, so it's even higher than this. But the number of scriptures that we have covered in these preacher rapture scripture studies has been 627 verses. Now, they're not all unique. They're not all separate individual verses that prove a preacher of rapture or whatever. They're, there's some overlap. Okay, There are times that we quote Revelation 6, 4, and we quote it in a couple different studies. There's times we quoted Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 in a couple different studies. So they don't all, it's not 627 individual verses. But my point I'm trying to make by saying this is, this isn't just some kind of a light little study that we did and just, you know, looked up a few little verses and ripped after the tribulation out of Matthew chapter 24 and said there it proves all the doctrine. No, no, no. We looked up a lot of scriptures in this study, a whole lot of scriptures. And, you know, I'm going to be trying at some point in time in the future. I'm going to, I haven't really talked much about this, but I'd like to eventually put a lot of my notes from years and years and years of preaching this pre trib rapture, these studies. I'd like to put a lot of my notes into an actual written PDF file and make it available on my website. But that's, I don't know when that's going to happen because it's going to be a lot of work. But the point is, there are lots, 
hundreds of scriptures within the Pauline epistles that do prove beyond a shadow of a doubt the body of Christ is not going through that time period. But uh, if you remember at the beginning of this, this study, I said my wife used to be post-trib. Uh, when she first contacted me, she was not saved when she first contacted me. And she was, you know, uh, info wars junkie and everything else at the point at that point in time. So I'm just going to have her share a little bit of her uh, personal testimony and, um, you know, uh, some very interesting things that we've been discovering. Um, a lot of this stuff is just recent discoveries. We, we did not know a lot of these things back when she first did her testimony. Um, a lot of things have been hidden from her. Uh, she lived under a system of lies. And so that's why you're going to hear some new things. And you're going to say, why didn't you bring us out in your testimony? We didn't know. We didn't realize. And, the Lord uh, didn't show us at that time. Yeah. So, and there's still things we're still trying to figure out. So, about her past. She's got a very complicated past. So, uh, go ahead. Slightly complicated. Slightly. <clears throat> well, as we said in, in previous videos, I was christened, you know, Catholic christening, otherwise known as initiated into, into witchcraft, coven, and raised in a covert Jesuit parish under the guise of Lutheran Catholic Missouri Synod affiliation cult building. Lutheran Church. Yes. Use Lutheran the actual church. terms. You know, we Lutheran I know it's church. Catholic, but you know, the point is it's Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Yes. Is what she was raised in. And we've showed some pictures of that Babel building that she was raised in in Atlantic, Iowa. It is literally covered with the IHS symbol, which is the seal of the Jesuit order. If I were to walk you through the, the building, I could spot out all the different Catholic Jesuit uh, symbols around that place, down to the very robes that I that I used to wear as an acolyte. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and there are other Lutheran type, you know, churches <laughs> that don't have the IHS everywhere. Okay, some do, some don't. So don't say, well, that's just all Lutheran churches are the same. No, they're not. No, they're not. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> growing up, uh, I don't know when this started or when it stopped, but what, at least one of my babysitters was a Freemason, a Fry Maurer, in other words. In Deutsch. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how many of them were, but at least one was for sure that we can identify right now with the Lord's help. Um, another, another fact is I was on the cusp of be, of becoming a sodomite as a lost girl because of the Jesuitry, the heavy, extremely heavy Jesuitry. I was, uh, trauma-based mind controlled into, uh, into, you know, just not saying anything about don't ask questions. Stop, stop talking. You know, don't say that, you know, don't ask questions. If you know, it's good for you. Don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. That kind of trauma-based mind control and the constant splitting personalities of my mother, um, who at one point she was like, oh, I love you. Oh, I'm so sorry. What's the microphone? Sorry, I'm trying to act out. You're not allowed to act. You're funny. She just stuck her tongue out of me. See, this is what I have to deal with. You're silly. But I saw it myself. You yes. know, So it's not just, oh, it's her imagination. Oh, she, you just need to. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Listen, you know, a lot of you have dealt with this. Some of you have come from families where you don't see this kind of thing, but there are some that have seen this where you have somebody that's literally splitting personalities and they're just, you never know which one you're going to hit. Mm -hmm. You know, one minute they're loving, they're friendly, they're happy, they're nice, you start to feel comfortable and just like that, boom, they're, they're ready to kill you. Right. I saw it with her mother, okay? I am a witness to it, right? And, I, and to be quite frank with you, I didn't want to believe it at first, okay? I wanted to just say, honey, maybe you're just overreacting, you know? So it wasn't like I'm just going, oh, I believe whatever you say. I was skeptical at first. Some of the stuff she told me about her family, I saw it firsthand. Okay, there's some major problems there and major connections. You can continue. Um, and by the way, I, I got to say one other thing, the thing about the uh, Masonic babysitter. They also went to multiple Masonic weddings, Masonic friends of the family, Masonic, Masonic, Masonic. Mm -hmm. So I met I met a number of Masonic friends. Um, this one this one man in particular, Lyle Pig was his name, and uh, the couple, uh, my parents I should say, um, <clears throat> introduced me to him one one day at Pizza Ranch in Atlantic Iowa because 
uh, my parents are extremely into eating now, eating now. I don't want to cook. Oh, let's go out to eat to celebrate this and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I uh, was introduced to this Vietnam veteran guy by the name of Lyle Pig. And some time ago, I don't know the exact date off the top of my head, the guy died. And I read his obituary and lo and behold, the guy was a Fry Mauer from Atlantic, Iowa, a Freemason. Mm -hmm. And I always, I tried to do the little tactic of, you know, I'm just going to pretend like I'm sucking up to the guy like everybody else does and has done to me throughout my life. You know, oh, you're such a great person. And then they just flip like that into something else. And uh, ironically, because I'm not a, uh, a friend of the power structure out West, he, he said, oh boy, you're laying it on thick there, aren't you? But yet in my mind, I'm like, oh, but you'll allow this couple to suck up to you and to pump you up and to give you a bunch of fluff whenever they talk to you. But yet me, I try that tactic and it just doesn't work for some reason. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you don't know the power structure out there, Atlantic, Iowa, it's not too far from Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska is completely controlled by the Jesuits. Boys Town, America, a Roman Catholic home. They were raping children, sending them to the White House to be raped back during the Reagan-Bush administration, the Franklin cover-up. Uh, oh, no, it's out in the kitchen. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, John DeCamp's book. A Republican congressman, by the way, that exposed this thing. And uh, it was totally covered up. All the judges out there, uh, I'm not going to give too much away. We'll be coming out with some more stuff in yeah. the future. But it's Roman Catholic powerhouse out there in the Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, over into Atlantic, Iowa. Very powerful Catholic area. But go ahead and continue okay. with the next one. Um, and when I say I was on the cusp of becoming a sodomite growing up, it was because um, of the heavy mind control, the trauma-based mind control and the Jesuitry, being that I was, I was born into a Jesuit-trained family, Jesuit trained parents, um, they, I started at some point in my early childhood years questioning, why wasn't I made a boy? Why am I a girl? Why wasn't I made a boy? So all of you sodomites out there and people who are trying to get into sodomy, you better think twice about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I can guarantee that your sodomite activity, if you are a full fledged sodomite and a full fledged atheist, it comes from the Vatican. Your mentality, your mind control behavior comes from the Vatican mm -hmm. and the Jesuits. All sodomy is occult based. Mm -hmm. You read that in the King James Bible. They're getting into to false gods and false worship and stuff. It's all sodomy that goes to with, along with that stuff. So, But go ahead and continue. Um, then, unbeknownst to me as a lost woman, always wondering what in the world is going on with these people, I ignor ignorantly ran in PhD level Jesuit circles as a lost woman and had no idea. I mm -hmm. had no idea. And uh, <clears throat> and through that circle, as a lost woman, they invited me to apply to Georgetown University, more specifically, Dr. Mark Stoneman, who was a, a visiting slash adjunct professor at GMU Fairfax, Virginia. GMU. George Mason University. One of the universities that she was going to. At in the Northern time. Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. And uh, also these Ph.D. level Jesuit um, that I ran in their circles, so to speak, they invited me to attend a Jesuit retreat on a number of occasions. And also um, a number of people I supposedly thought were my friends, they also tried to invite me to a Jesuit retreat yeah. on a number of occasions. And I said, well, what's that about? They didn't say Jesuit retreat, they said a retreat. And I asked them, well, what do you mean? Oh, it's just, you know, it's a fun place. You meet people, you hang out, da da da. Mm -hmm. And, no and what you found out later on when you realized where these retreats were being held through doing study, you realized, oh, well, these are actually Jesuit retreat centers and they're all over the country. You can look it up. You can actually look, Google it, Jesuit retreat centers, and you'll see these places where you can go. And what you do is when you go there, it's a quiet place and everything else for contemplation. Um, they'll have labyrinths that you can walk. It's like, looks like a maze. It goes in and like a little spiral thing. It comes in. Um, and it's, it's essentially a place to go to do the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius de Loyola. Mm -hmm. My little Ignatius, but I like to call him by his more aptly named name. Amen. But that's where you go to go through these spiritual exercises, to get up through the different vowels that you take. 
where you basically melt, destroy your mind and come under mind control and to be just eventually just a corpse, a cadaver for the Vatican, where you have nothing, no free will of your own. You just kind of go through and whatever the, the Pope says, go over there and stick your hand into the light socket and, and be electrocuted to death. Yes, sir. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what you do. And so they say, I want you to go in and bomb that building or I want you to go kill this person and kill yourself. That's what they'll do. That's a so, code delta mind control. Yeah. That example you mentioned. Another aspect that the Lord showed me about my lost life is church building membership and attendance justification. All of you women out there who are militantly uh, for church building attendance and church membership. Uh, let me just give you a little hint here. If you have ever studied Scottish Rite Freemasonry, there are certain degrees beyond the uh, third degree called the Master Mason. Um, <clears throat> Scottish Rite Freemasonry covers the fourth through the 32nd degree of Freemasonry. And uh, there are certain degrees in the Scottish Rite branch of Freemasonry that uh, are a spitting image, verbatim from all your justification excuses of I got to go to church. I want to fellowship with people. I want to fellowship. I want to see my friends. I want to socialize. All this, all your stupid little excuses for church building attendance and membership comes directly from Scottish Rite Free, Freimaur, Freemasonry. And mm -hmm. uh, if you study it yourself, and... you will see the connections. All they do is you just, you're basically, whenever you use your little justification for your sin of attending a church building, you know, church attendance, uh, you look at the Freemason sources and you look at what you're saying, it's exactly verbatim except for mm -hmm. take out the word lodge and put in the word such and such church. Right. And, and you know, by saying that she's not condemning the thing of fellowship, it's totally fine for Christians to fellowship. That's not the problem here. The problem is when you come to a special place and you have special rules and you have act a special way and, mm -hmm. and the whole nine yards. And you know it goes on in church buildings. Mm -hmm. Don't even try to tell me or my wife, oh, th no, we don't do that at our church. Please. It's a social club. You know it's a social club. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there are ranks within that social club that you can get higher up into the inner circle and all this other stuff to, the, to get beside the worshipful master, you know, the uh -huh. man of God in the pulpit. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't even tell me about it. And even the quote of, it's good to be in the house of God, uh, that's slightly tweaked Scottish Rite Freemasonry propaganda. Mm -hmm. So everything that you use to justify your sin of attending a church building and your church membership, it comes directly from the Scottish Rite branch of Freemasonry. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You're in and sin if you're justifying it. Yeah, it is. And you know, it's, it's funny too because you look at a lot of these big name preachers of the past, they were Masons. Sam Jones, Billy Graham, or uh, Billy, well, Billy Graham too, Billy Sunday, a lot of these guys, a lot of these church buildings, the, the big, real big ones that were built by the great heroes of the faith, a lot of them were built by Masons. You can see the Masonic cornerstones down in the corner of the foundation dedicating it to the Masons. And even but let's, if you see let's a continue. Keystone, that's Masonic. Yeah. Um, another aspect was uh, what about my, my parents? Well, both my parents are Jesuit trained atheist Lutherans. I say atheist because uh, when you're dealing with Jesuitry, Jesuitry created atheism. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you from personal experience that, uh, you know, a person may, may claim to be, I'm a good person, I'm a Christian, but in practice, they're an atheist. I grew up around it. Yeah. You... I know your propaganda. You're not going to convince me about anything. There are professing atheists and practicing atheists, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, you can might not be a professing atheist, but in practice you can deny God. We read about it there in, in uh, Titus. Okay, in works they deny Him. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. They're atheists. Well, but let me let me tell you some facts about my parents. My father, Lyle Luther Kutra, was a Vietnam era Navy cryptology communications officer, and uh, in the community he's still a household name to this day. More on that later. My mother, Marie Carolyn Uller Kutra, she has been trained for several decades by Creighton University, which is a Jesuit institution. Mm -hmm. In Omaha, Nebraska. Uh huh. And it's a hop, skip, and a jump from Omaha to Atlantic, Iowa. Look it up, it's not that far on a map. Mm -hmm. uh, Marie has been trained by Creighton University Jesuits for stress test programs 
and EEG, electroencephalograph, uh, type training purposes at uh, the hospital in Atlantic, Iowa, at the cardiac rehab department as a registered nurse, RN, for several decades. And she would literally tell me, you know, you know, face to face, here's what an EEG printout looks like, here's what it means if they're active, here's what it means if they're sleepy, you know, here's what it means if such and such case and yada 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 here's how it works here's mm -hmm. how the stress test is conducted i've been there firsthand eyewitness experience okay yeah and the lord knows i'm telling the truth mm -hmm. and and you know understanding jesuitical sophistry where they answer your question by not answering your question i saw it again i saw being around them and stuff i was there at their place two different times they were uh, came to see us two different times once in pennsylvania Actually, no, three, three different times. Um, once when I was uh, down in Lancaster County, once in Eldred, you know, mm -hmm. us, you know, not not me, and then and then here in this very place. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I've been around it, I've seen it. But uh, and uh, another fact is, as a lost woman, I never knew the King James Bible existed. Never even knew it until the Lord, you know, really led me into the truth, like majorly led me into the truth in the last few months before he saved me in October of 2011 was when he saved me from my sins and uh <clears throat> and then I then I with the Lord's help I found my grandmother's heirloom King James Bible and uh have I still have it to this day as a matter of fact read that one last um, don't read that okay. one now then what's this you say what's this about trauma-based mind control well um I was born into it from birth until May t May of 2012 when uh, Brian and I married and uh, the Lord brought us together in May of 2012 and um, <clears throat> my trauma based mind control from birth to about seven months into my salvation uh, led to me being a post tribber out of sheer ignorance and fear because me being zealous for the truth even as a lost woman uh, back in my Boston, Massachusetts days of taking classes out there and everything and living out there, I was constantly looking into truth. What about this? What about that? Typing in Jesus tack is tax savior.com. I despise that website. Don't go there. Do not yeah. go. David to... J. Stewart was yes. also convicted for what? Uh, underage fornication or something like that or something. molesting children or something. I forget. Yeah. He's a, he's a Jack Hiles guy. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. That should say enough if you've seen the Jack Hiles studies. Amen. Um, so out of my ignorance and fear, because of my desire for, for truth all the time, I literally would put off my studies back then just to search for truth. What about this? What about that? On the computer. And, uh, and mm -hmm. that stupid website led me to Jesuit Jones's Infowars. I mean, <clears throat> Alex Jones's Infowars. And uh, he's a Jesuit code Judah, really. And, yeah. Um, Openly and, talks about Jesuit friends, Ray McGovern's yeah. former CIA. You know, yeah, I have a video on that, so you can check that out. So combine his uh, trauma-based mind control propaganda and mm -hmm. Jesuit sophistry with my parents' trauma-based mind control, Jesuit trained sophistry. You add those two together, you have a very, very troublesome situation. Mm -hmm. and, and by the, you know, let me just interject here because a lot of people think trauma-based mind control has to be in some dingy abandoned warehouse someplace with a bunch of guys from the CIA and some Dr. Mengele type of a figure there with a white lab coat on and they've got you strapped down and they and they put you through this you know Fritz Springmeier type of a mind control no 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 we've all been subjected to trauma-based mind control here in America okay 9-11 um, was trauma-based mind control uh, the JFK assassination was was trauma-based mind control they do it all the time. That's why I say stay away from television because they're doing it to you just nonstop. It's subliminals and all the other stuff, mind control and whatever. And so when you have people that are involved in the system of this Jesuit type of a system, they will produce, they will, they will um, practice trauma-based mind control on their own family members, on their own children. And that's why it's just continually, um, you're being forced to do things that go against your conscience and you're just like, but I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. You're telling me don't do this, but you do it. And I'm being forced into this. And, and, and it just, it messes with your mind. That's why she's saying these things. Okay. She wasn't uh, specifically taken that we know of yet, you know, because she has a lot of her memories are, are gone from 
times in her past. But, you know, she wasn't taken and actually forcibly done, you know, horrible tortures and stuff, you know, with the CIA present and whatever else. That we know of. That we know of. <laughs> I don't know. But, you know, what we're saying is the stuff that we do know. There was connection to the Jesuits. There was connection to the Masons. There was connection to a lot of things. And a lot of this stuff, I mean, when she first married me, it was just like, I could see there was a whole lot of stuff there that had gone on in her past, and I didn't understand it. She didn't understand it, and the Lord's been revealing it to us. And why is He revealing it? He revealing it to us, so we can tell other people, because I know a lot of you have gone through some things too. So, so it's just, yeah, you know, that's that's why I'm just I need to I need to say that simply because people might think of trauma-based mind control being this really specific, some government facility, Area 51 or some kind of, no, 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 no. It no. can be. It goes, it can be, yes, the black ops type of stuff, but it goes on, it's a lot more common than people realize. Mm -hmm. A lot more common. Yep. And that, that continual fear, the fear-mongering of Alex Jones through InfoWars, the fear-mongering of Steven Anderson, of Ken Hovind, it's going to be Richly. real bad. It's going to be really, really bad. And there's going to be bad things and, and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, Trauma-based mind control. I mean, listen to a post-trib or some time and come away. Tell me what spirit you have afterwards. You have a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. And when you read the Bible and you read and you say, okay, Jesus is coming soon and he's going to catch his bride away. You know, all tears forever over in God's eternal day. It will be worth it all. You sing a song like that. Yeah. You sing a song like that, you feel so good. It lifts your spirits, you know crazy but let's continue um so because of that that 24 7 trauma-based mind control between jesuit jones and my parents jesuit trained tbmc programming 24 7 from birth to may of 2012 that led to um for the first two or three months i had absolutely no opportunity to even open my king james bible and start reading because it was constant program program mind control mind control programming trauma-based you know Oh, I love you. I just want to kill you. I love you. Mm -hmm. I just want to kill you. You little... Uh, yep, and she's, you know, you, you know, you say, people look at her and they go, she's so dramatic. She, why does she got to be so radical? She's acting exactly the way her mother does, okay? He's seen uh, it. I've seen it. I saw her. I mean, we're talking nuts here, people. You know, nuttier, nuttier than a pecan pie, as Ruckman would say. Amen. So uh, she's not acting radical. She's acting out exactly how things were done. So please don't, you know, and, and, you know, well, go ahead. Just, I don't want to get just, ahead of you. I just want to say this. And because of when I said in one of our previous FAQ videos from what, a year or two ago, I said the phrase to the effect of, I had no time to read my King James Bible after I got saved. What you didn't hear me say at that time, because we didn't have enough time to explain this, was because of the trauma-based mind control my Jesuit trained parents were doing to me from birth to the time that the Lord brought Brian and I together to marry in May of 2012, what you didn't hear me say was because of my trauma-based mind control 24-7, that's what kept me from reading the King James Bible for the first couple months of getting saved. And as a result, you know, certain professing Christian women wrote me from wrote me offline and were like, See, you did such and such after you got saved, so I'm justified in working outside the home, and I'm justified in finishing my college degree, and I'm justified in wearing pants, and I'm justified in this, and I'm justified mm -hmm. in that. In other words, they were saying, they were saying, in other words, that, you know, she, they took part of what she said and mm -hmm. said, okay, you did those things because you wanted to do those things. You wanted to, be, to have a career, and you wanted to not read the King James, so, and you turned out okay. So I can do the same thing and turn out okay. No, 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 no. I didn't want we're, a career at right. all. We're even talking as a lost woman. Right, and we're talking about a being forced into a situation here, life-threatening situation. I saw, it. I mean, it was crazy the stuff that, that Lord brought her out of, you know. And she's had a lot of scars from that stuff. And you know, Lord's with Lord's help, we're getting through it. But you know, it's been rough. And again, we're telling people this because. If you're out there and you're in the system, you need to understand, first of all, if you are in mind control, if you're some Hollywood actress or Hollywood actor, or whatever, you're, you're somebody that's in the mind control system, the first thing that you need to do is have a 
personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not connected to religion, organized religion, not connected to A church whatever. building. Yes. Get away from church buildings. And whatever you do, do not come to God as a repentant, contrite sinner and in a stupid Bible building. Stay away from churches. Yeah. Stay away control. from Masonic church buildings. Yeah. And see, you know, we say that because it's a lot of those places are catch nets and they'll bring you right into another form of mind control. That's and, and again, we've seen this. We've talked about this in other videos and we'll be talking more about it in the future. But it's so important to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Away from and churches. There is hope that you can get away from the system that is controlling you. She did. Okay. So God can get you, God can He can get you out of that system. God can do amazing things. But only if you do things his way. And only See, if that's, you that's ask the important him for part. help. If you're yeah. in the system and you're like, I want out of the system, but you're gonna run to a stupid man made organization like Christian Legal Defense or you know, whatever law association, well, God's not going to help you get out of it. Yeah. If you cry out to the Lord and you say, God, please help me. I just want the truth. I don't care what it costs me. God will be just completely drawn to you and he will, and he will say, let me show you. Okay. He will show you the truth. He will come to you immediately and show you the truth. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is say, I just want the truth. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care what people say. Why won't somebody tell me the truth? The truth is one of God's titles. And the second he hears you say that, he will be showing you the truth, mm -hmm. which will lead to your true salvation, according to the King James Bible, away from satanic Jesuit Mason Babel buildings. Yeah. And one last thing I want to say another See, little she example. speaks clearly. There's no, no figuring out. What does she really mean? You know what she means. But go ahead, finish up here. Um, and another tentacle of my Jesuitical lost life. Uh, from birth until about January, maybe February, as late as February of 2012, uh, my entire life and everything about my entire life was planned and controlled via Jesuitical trauma-based mind control programming, which which led to, at the age of about 10 years old, roughly, 9 or 10 years old, a Creighton University educated lawyer, court-appointed lawyer, took out a annuity policy on me. And, uh, with working with her parents. Huh? Yes, with their full knowledge and support, and like, oh, sure, not a problem. Hey, if it makes us money, mm -hmm. proving First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, you know, hey, you know, if it makes us money, according to my parents' opinion, then it must be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so the Creighton University trained lawyer that was appointed by the court at the time when this annuity dog bite situation was, was uh, you know, going down, going through the system, I guess you could say, uh, this Jesuit lawyer created this policy on me with their consent after the dog bite incident and uh, and all throughout my lost life, it was like, you know, I was I was so depressed that I had threatened to commit suicide on a number of occasions, and yet ironically, my my parents were like, oh no, don't do that, go get help, go talk to a counselor, go get help. Why? Because uh, they wanted to profit off my death. So uh, you know, another and tentacle... suicide suicide negates the payouts. By the way, yes, they had multiple things which we'll be talking about in other studies multiple ways of making money from her death, mm -hmm. multiple types of insurance and things like that. And so, ironically. And, and real quick, and Andrew, this whole thing of this Creighton University lawyer that set this whole thing up, we literally found out what, last week or yeah, something? Yeah, roughly. So, I mean, this is all, this is a lot of new revelations the Lord's been showing us stuff. I mean, looking up people's names, she's looking at the policies, pages and stuff like this of who's setting up what, and then she looks them up and stuff, and they have LinkedIn profiles or whatever else, and it's coming out, they're Jesuits. Jesuits all connected to her past. And I mean, we're just like totally weirded out by this. It's like, whoa. So a lot of pieces of the puzzle are clicking in here Amen. for us about what happened in her past. And but. ironically, the uh, life insurance policy we've mentioned in previous videos to this, to this current one, um, my parents, Lau and Marie, created a life insurance policy, policy on me when I was almost six years old. I was about a month and a half away from my sixth birthday. So they could profit off of my death. And we'll show you in a future video 
that by the insurance company's own words, it literally says that the insured, that would have been me, you know, for a certain amount of time, but by the grace and mercy of my Lord Jesus Christ, he helped me get out of that satanic scam and cancel it completely. Um, but it literally says in their own documents that I would have to die in order for my parents to profit off of my death with a $50,000 uh, check. Yeah, they are the beneficiaries. Uh huh. And, and we, owners. We show the. We're going to be showing the documents in a future study. So, yeah. You know, you can you can say conspiracy, cry conspiracy, whatever you want to do here, but uh, facts are facts, and we're going to be showing more and more as time goes by, kicking the system. But the ironic, the the very interesting thing is, the whole time that my wife was raised in this all this Lutheran stuff and the Jesuits and everything else. You were taught all about the preacher rapture. I mean, they just drilled it into your head, right? No, actually, I never heard about the pre-tribulation rapture. Yeah. I never heard the word rapture. Mm -hmm. It was always, you know, go to church and do this community service thing and do this and do that. And between my, between Jesuit Jones's propaganda of survive to the end, prepare to survive. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through the tribulation. You know, and my parents' trauma-based mind control. Uh, it's kind of a weak, you know, interpretation of Jones. You know. Just sure. Kidding. Oh, you mean I need to practice <laughs> you, you more? You need to be a better actor. But okay, I'll Sorry, try. I had to interject that. But anyways, um, she still does her little uh, mother superior, Sister Catherine act once in a while there. With her, her little grin. Because huh? <laughs> she, you know, has seen that with Amish and Catholic nuns and things that, you know, whatever and uh, psychiatrists and stuff too <laughs> over the years, you know, the, the fake smile. So if you don't understand my wife's sarcasm, you know, you'll understand it eventually. But, you know, yeah, she was never taught this stuff. So these, these post trippers will come out and they'll say, the rapture, the preacher of rapture was created by a Jesuit, Manuel, Manuel Lacunza, I think is the guy. Uh, it was actually, his name was Ribeiro or something like this. And uh, he was created by a Jesuit. Okay, if it was created by a Jesuit, then a woman that's raised in the whole system just Jesuits, Jesuits, Jesuits everywhere around her. Uh, don't you think she might have heard about it once or twice? And she didn't even know about it till after I met her. Yes, because you know? the Lord used my husband here. Uh, obviously, we weren't married at the time that he uh, corrected me on the rapture issue in 2011. But the point is, is the Lord used my husband, my future husband, to straighten me out on the rapture issue. Mm -hmm. But, but... And As I said at the beginning of the thing, it wasn't my preaching that taught her this thing. It was the fact that she could see all through her lost life the fruits of those people that believe that there is no pre-trib rapture. Truly believe it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, see, that's the issue here. The people that do not believe in an imminent return of Jesus Christ will live a completely different way. You know, the Bible talks about there, you know, uh, how's the thing about... Um, Oh, I can't think how the verse goes, but it's, it talks about people uh, increasing into more ungodliness because they don't believe that Jesus is, is going to be taking them away. Isn't it in First Thessalonians? You know, I'll look it up. Um, but, you know, those people, see, these things, they increase into more ungodliness. And so she saw her life. She can prove the fruit of post-trib rapturism or, you know, Catholic go through the tribulationism, say it that way, um, she can prove the rotten fruits of that. She is living proof of that whole system being wicked uh, and living proof that there is no such thing as, oh, the Jesuits, they believe that Christians you know, get raptured out or something. No, they don't. And by God's grace and mercy, I am a survivor of the post-trib satanic heresy created mm -hmm. by the Jesuits and the Vatican. So if you are a militant post-trib and you have supposedly heard and study both sides of the argument and you're a professing Christian woman out there, you better check yourself. Because I was born into the Jesuit system. And I mm -hmm. can tell you that the post-trib rapture heresy is Catholicism. Yep. I'm not thinking, I cannot, there's so many things going through my head right now, I cannot think of where that verse is. Uh, boy. It's not in, we didn't make any notes for this end part of the thing. She did. She made some notes about stuff she wanted to say there. Oh, and I want but, to uh, add this too because know, this is very, very important good, you for can keep all talking, the lost keep women looking. out there who are watching this, you know, potentially watching this. Um, if you're a lost Catholic 
or witch or Jesuit or a atheist by name and practice. Uh, let me just say this. You know, a person can go through a lifetime of Jesuit-based torture and trauma-based mind control, like what I went through as a lost woman, and the Lord knows I'm telling the truth here, and yet, despite all the torture and trauma-based mind control I went through as a lost woman, I never, ever denied God's existence, and I never, ever foolishly charged my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ about any of it. Found it. So all of you atheists out there who say, there's no God, I don't believe in God, I feel bad for you because yeah. you probably were tortured and trauma-based, mind-controlled in a Masonic lodge or by Jesuit Masonic trained parents, church. a Masonic church building. Well, Masonic lodge, church building, what's the difference? It's, mm -hmm. You just tweak the propaganda. Different the uniforms, different people. Yeah. But uh, let, me, let me read the verse here, okay? But shun profane, it's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Okay, that's the nature of perversion. That's the nature of people that are in the wicked system. It increases unto more ungodliness. People that are lost always get worse. Okay, if you're saved, you, you can still live after the flesh. If you live after the flesh, ye shall die. You can still mess around and you can get worse. But uh, if you're a Christian, you're supposed to be purging yourself, sanctifying your, your life and things, uh, living according to Scripture. That's what you're supposed to be doing. And that's what the pre-trib rapture does. That's what the rapture teaching is all about. It's about purging yourself from worldliness and, and from bad things like that. It's a purifying hope. It's saying, if Jesus comes back next week, that means I only have one more week to work for the Lord. I only have one more week to put out gospel tracts, to witness to my neighbors, to witness to my family members, to have people make fun of me and put me down and things like that. It's a purifying hope. And let me say this too. If you are in mind control, if you are in a bad situation... Even if and you're you, a sodomite. The, listen, please let me get this out. If you are in a bad situation, understand, and you say, there's no way I can get out of this thing. Even if I get saved, they, I'm trapped in this thing and whatever. What is the rapture going to do? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you go up. Boom. It doesn't matter where you're at. You could be in the most maximum security, underground, deep underground military base, Area 51, whatever, black ops place, whatever else. If you're saved, if you truly come to the Lord in that broken, contrite spirit where you're saying, I am a sinner, I know that there's nothing I can do to save myself. There's no, sh no shred of self-righteousness in me. There's nothing there. I know I can't save myself. I have to put my faith 100% in what Jesus did on the cross to pay for my sins. If you do that and the Lord saves you and the rapture happens, it doesn't matter where you're at. You're leaving and you're going to be caught up to be with the Lord in the air and you're going to be with Him forever and He is going to fix up everything for you just like that. But if you're post-trib, you have no promise like that. There's nothing for you but misery and pain and suffering coming. And they'll say, well, yes, but God will be with me. God's the one that's doing it to you. Read the book of Revelation. It's God that's, blown, that's opening these seals and saying, hey, to the angels, blow those trumpets. Hey, pour out those vials. It's a weird system. Totally weird system. And I just, I just want to make this point, that uh, no matter what your status is as a lost sinner, if you call on the Lord for help, if you say, God, I just want the truth, he will take you out of that system. He will lead you out of that system just like he did for me. Okay? Mm -hmm. There is nothing that you're going through as a lost sinner, if you're lost and watching this, as a woman. You know, no matter what your situation is, God can and will get you out of it if you cry out to him for help. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you stay away from church buildings, he can especially help you. Because, uh, you know... All, every single person who says, I'm a sodomite, I can't get out of it. Well, I used to think just like you. Because I used to say as a lost woman, isn't there anybody who can help me? I want out of this. Why won't anybody believe me? You know, I just want to know the truth. What is the truth? You know, I felt like I was trapped. I felt like there was no way out as a lost woman. And then when my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saved me in October of 2011, if you haven't heard my testimony, you can, uh, in your spare time, you know, the Lord got me through all that. And I prayed fervently for a husband. And I basically said to the Lord one day, I said, uh, 
I am not leaving from this spot right here until you give me a husband, Lord. I don't care what I have to do. If I have to lie to my parents and tell them what they want to hear about, did you apply for a job at such and such? Yeah, yeah. And they, 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 never, they never call me back. I can't believe it, you know. Just, I played their game just to tell them what they wanted me to say. Just to make them think, oh yeah, you know, I'm actively looking for a job. The Lord can get you out of anything. And if it wasn't for the Lord, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saving me when he did, I would have ended up a sodomite Jesuit trying to uh, more than likely probably tear down his ministry to this day. I'm glad I didn't have to go against her either. <laughs> and I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I did not end up a sodomite Jesuit mm -hmm. computer nerd. Because that's probably what I'd be right now if it wasn't for the Lord saving me when he did. And I was on that, that cusp of 28 going on 29 years old. You know, because they say about 30 years old is the time frame that... Uh, Mind control starts to break down. Yes, and you're either going to become a programmer and become 10 times worse than you were when you were, victim when you were victimized by it, or you're going to get out of it via true salvation found in the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. And by God's grace and mercy, he helped me get out of it, and he saved my worthless hide as a lost woman, and he gave me a new life as a King James Bible-believing Christian woman. Or lady, whichever one you want to say. I just thought that word lady in my mind. So I'm glad you read my mind. You have a tendency to do that. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> so that's going to be it for these studies. Um, going through the Pauline epistles and the books that Paul wrote, clearly wrote, I do believe he wrote Hebrews as well, but that's more for the time of Jacob's trouble people. Um, but uh, another study. But, you know, just going through it, brethren, and it's just like, you know, there's no option. There's no, there's no question. There's no, well, it, it could go either way. It can't go either way. There's no possible explanation other than the fact that it's the body of Christ leaving before the time of Jacob's trouble. And, um, you know, I just want you to understand when you see my wife being radical and things like that, because I see it in the comments, I wish she wouldn't be so radical. She's been through some things, all right? And, and yeah, just a little bit. You know, she's been through some stuff. And she is very, very fervent against the devil and his system. And, uh, you know, I mean, the, the Lord's shown us stuff and and about, about these things. And, I mean, it's, it's, it's documented. It's facts. It's, it's not conjecture. It's not, well, maybe. It's names. It's places. It's dates. It's whatever. You know, it's right there. And I just so, want to say this. If, you're, if you still think that uh, you're... You don't believe in God, you're an atheist and you're watching this, or you're a sodomite and you're watching this, or you're any type of uh, Catholic witch by any name, and you're like, well, the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church is Christ's church. I can tell you because I went through that mind control, and the Lord showed me when I was a lost woman, you know, throughout my entire lost life, that uh, the Jesuits are not God. The Vatican is not God. The Pope is not God. Oh, There's terrible. only one God, and he wrote the King James Bible. This is the only perfect, infallible, and errant Bible in existence. And if you don't have this Bible in your life, and you're not reading it, woe be to you. Because the Vatican, and the whore on seven mountains, and the Vatican's church and all her children, are not Christian. They're not biblical. And the Pope is not God. Yeah. The, Get that the, through your head. Yeah. The Bible says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The Vatican is the controller of the systems of death. They have tortured people um, a lot of different ways. They are the masters of torture. And they are killing people through food, through the pharmaceutical industry, through television, through all kinds of things. And uh, if you're in that system and you are a Jesuit, a spook, um, working for the uh, DEA, the CIA, the FBI, whoever, NSA, whatever, you're expendable and you know it. Mm -hmm. You are expendable. And you say, well, I'm loyal to the system. They don't care. Amen. If you go up high enough, you're getting up to Satan, to his realm, to Lucifer, the Vatican openly praise to and uh, you get up into there he hates you mm -hmm. 
He doesn't love you. He doesn't respect you. It doesn't matter how much you do for him. He hates your guts. And he will kill you when your uh, time is up. When your usefulness has come to an end, you will be killed. Just look at the Hollywood celebrities. You know, they've been dropping like flies this year. I was, I was starting to collect some of the, I'd get on, you know, checking the internet and stuff, checking the email in the morning, and I'd see, you know, another Hollywood celebrity's dead. And it's just like, man, they're dropping like flies right now. And a lot of them, they're young. There's no reason for them to be just dropping dead and it's mysterious. We're not really sure what the death was all about. They're killing them. They're killing them. Of course they're killing them. You know, and you see this thing all the time. These celebrities coming out, yeah, trying to say that they're under mind control and it's like they get thrown back into the system. You can't fight Satan with Satan. You say, I'm going to get a good lawyer that's satanic so I can fight the satanic system. Uh, that doesn't work. So we could keep going on and on and on. But, you know, the point is there's a lot more that's going to be coming out in the future about all this. And, you know, she gets really, really militant about this because, you know, just thinking, you know, I remember when we first got married, it was like, do other people go through this stuff? I mean, I don't understand. Why did this stuff happen to me? And I'm going, I don't know. I mean, are you sure about that? And she's like, yes, I went through it. And then I started to see it myself when we're out there and, and when we're around our parents and when we're in this circle and I'm going, wait a second here. You know, my wife's not only not crazy, but I, I'm seeing some stuff here. I, I don't even understand. Even being a preacher and studying for years and years and years, before I went into the ministry, and I'm starting to go, whoa, you know, and we're still seeing things. We're still discovering things, and it's literally almost a daily basis. We're starting to unravel this whole thing, and uh, we're not going to be shy about it. We're not going to say, let's not, let's not name names, dear. Let's, let's protect uh, the, these innocent Jesuits or something. No, we're coming out with it. If you're a Jesuit, we're coming after you. Amen. Okay? And you know what? Honestly, let me tell you this. No matter how high a level of Jesuit you are, you know what our real desire is for you? To show you you are serving the wrong master. And to show you, I don't care how much power you think you have, they will kill you. Mm -hmm. All right? You are serving the wrong master. Amen. It's not that our God is a, somehow a different God than your gods and that, and that our gods can get better power than his gods and his gods and our gods. No, 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 no. There is only one God, and there are devils that pose as other gods. You need to understand that. I've seen some of the people in the black ops world, and they'll talk about there are ancient gods that are before Jehovah or Yahweh or something like this. Nonsense. Those are devils that are telling you those things, mm -hmm. and they will kill you. All right? You're serving the wrong master. Jesus Christ, the true Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, the man that appears in the book this King James Bible. He's the one that you need to have a personal relationship with, not through organized religion. And if you're believing, to finish up, if you're believing that you somehow have faith in Jesus, but you have to go through spiritual exercises, through mental programming and things like this to get more power and whatever else, and this time of Jacob's trouble that's coming, the great tribulation as people call it, that's going to somehow make you earn that much greater salvation and things, you are deceived mm -hmm. all right you need to come out of that system you need to get away from it and if the holy spirit if you're truly saved as a professing king james bible believing christian woman and mm -hmm. you say i've heard both sides but i'm still post-trib if you are truly saved when the lord shows you from his word and the holy spirit convicts you you're going to drop your nonsense your heresy and you're going to say yes sir i you know that's now what i did Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Second Timothy chapter 2. Uh, yes, you will say yes, sir. I did. Okay. I immediately dropped that nonsense, that post-trib Satanism, and I said, I had no idea, Lord. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Yeah. And I we changed just like that. Yep. Absolutely. And the and Lord knows I'm telling the truth. Yeah. And if you've seen all these studies, you understand why we're being so emphatic about it. There's no question. There's no debate. So, I think that's going to be it for now. Yeah. You think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I'm, I think so, but I'm not, I don't know, know so. You don't know for sure. <laughs> what are they going to do if you don't know for sure and they don't know for sure? Who does know for sure? Probably Mrs. For Sure. Who, who 
is that? What is she I actually had an elementary school teacher in fifth grade, Paradise Elementary School, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. His name was Mr. Sure. I don't, his first name was not Four, though, so he wasn't for sure. <laughs> so, okay, that's going to be it. Uh, thank you very much for watching these videos. Um, I hope that they've strengthened your faith in the imminent return of Jesus Christ and uh, challenged you. Brethren, I don't know how long. Could be this year. Could be next year. Don't know. But you know what? That time is coming. That time is coming when we're going to be leaving here. And only the things that you've done for Jesus Christ, that's the only things that's going to be going. The only things. Please keep that in mind. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for your prayers. And we will see you in the next video.